welcome to RPV TVs around the peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and I'm here with the executive director of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, Adrian Mohan. We are here at Abalone Cove to celebrate Earth Day Month. Happy Earth Day Month. Same to you. Yes, yes. On April 22nd, it is Earth Day, and there's so many activities all month long to celebrate nature. And I mean, we can't be in a more beautiful place. Um, the Land Conservancy has a lot going on that we want to share. So do our local businesses. So do our city, all kinds of Earth Day activities. So with that, let's just kick off with what the Land Conservancy has plans for Earth Day. We're so happy spring has sprung here in the peninsula and we're uh, able to offer in-person activities as well as a mix of some hybrid and virtual activities for our Earth Day. We've got a lot going on. Uh, we have our monthly nature walk, which we've converted to a nature talk, and we'll host that virtually. That features Alta Vicente Reserve, mm -hmm. uh, which is near City Hall. That's on 18th at 1.30, and uh, folks who want to join that can find information on our website, pvplc.org, and sign up there. Of course, normally as a community, we come out, do all kinds of activities together, but we have to be safe because of the pandemic. Now, how have you adjusted sort of to encouraging the community to come out and do to, to, to come together to help? But at the same time, we have to be safe like we are here six feet apart. Right. And, um, you know, our volunteers and community members are, are so eager to come out and help with, you know, planting plants or taking care of some of the weeds that are now sprouting this spring. So we're uh, implementing very safe uh, volunteer activities, small group sizes, well distance and highly sanitized tools. Um, and we're so happy to offer our um, in-person activities starting on Saturdays. And that will, our big Earth Day celebration is April 24th at White Point Nature Preserve um, in the city of San Pedro. Tell us a little more about the movie you're showcasing for Earth Day on April 22nd. What's happening with that event? Yes, uh, well, we are really looking for opportunities to help inform the community about what they can each do to help our planet. And I think the best way to do that is to see what we can do in our own homes. So we're so pleased that Doug Talame, the author of Nature's Best Hope, is doing a presentation that will talk about uh, ways that we can even beautify our gardens with native plants to provide uh, flower opportunities for bugs and critters and to help provide habitat in our own small garden spaces at home. So if people want to uh, take, participate, it's a Zoom presentation, what do they do? That's right, they can go to our website where we have all of the sign up and login in information. Uh, it is April 22nd at 7 p.m. And then we're having Doug Talame come back to do a live Q&A to talk about his book on May 1st. Awesome. Um, let's, we're going to, first of all, we're sitting in the most beautiful habitat restoration project that the Land Conservancy is working on. We're going to tell you all about what's happening here at Abalone Cove. But first, more about, for the viewers watching, a little bit of the history of the Land Conservancy, which was founded in 1988. All the great work you do, your mission, just share about that. <laughs> well, we, we're such a community-based organization that supports uh, a staff of experts that are uh, really skilled at land acquisitions and restoring habitat to support the really rare and endangered species on the peninsula, such as the Palos Verdes blue butterfly. Um, and what you're seeing behind me here at Abalone Cove is a 13-acre restoration project that extends from the bluff top all the way down to the coast. And of course, you co-manage the 1,400-acre preserve with the city. Talk about that partnership and all that's involved with the preserve that we all love so much. Well, yes, we do uh, coordinate with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. The Land Conservancy is the designated habitat manager for the preserve. And so we are charged with restoring and monitoring the habitat and its wildlife. And we collaborate with the city on trail projects and, and maintaining the preserve and keeping it looking beautiful. Let's talk a little bit how you, all these projects get funded, including the purchase of the preserve. Let's start with that so the community knows about what it took to, to actually acquire this, this beautiful land. Yes, uh, the, well the Land Conservancy worked in partnership with the city to acquire over $40 million in funding over the years. And that was through federal, state, and community contributions to purchase all the open space that the city owns and the Land Conservancy manages. That's the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. Right, of course the preserve, 1,400 acres. There's actually, is it a dozen reserves within the preserve? That's right. And I think 33 miles of trail, so there's a lot to manage and I, I feel like I, I read that you uh, typically are going to um, restore five acres of habitat every year with, with the city um, land, including right here. This is 13 acres that you're working on preserving here at Abalone Cove. Talk about how this is getting funded and what goes on to all this restoration. 
Um, well, this Abalone Cove restoration is a multi-year project. Um, it's funded through community contributions, uh, some funding from the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, but a bulk of it comes through grants that we seek. Um, and the latest grant that we received was for, through the National Environmental Education Foundation. Nice. Congratulations. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> and they're also supported by Toyota. So we're so thankful for these partners who value habitat restoration as well as community engagement and volunteers are really a critical part of ensuring that this project is successful. Let's paint a picture of the habitat here. We were talking earlier, I said, will we see the gnat catcher um, here one day soon? And you were explaining, like, tell us what, uh, give us a little play-by-play -play of what will be growing around us. Well, this site first started as a field of mustard, which is a non-native weed, essentially. So we cleared the mustard away and laid down drip system irrigation, which is a very uh, a water-wise way to water our new plants. And now we've planted um, over 12,000 native plants that we grow in our native plant nursery. And you get things like bush sunflower, the yellow flowers behind us, and host plants for our butterflies. Right, and on that note, we're gonna spread our wings and talk butterfly, the uh, Palos Verdes blue butterfly. Fly. I remember last year around this time, you had a secret operation. We love that, right? You had to re you released for the first time into the reserve, um, into the preserve somewhere at an undisclosed place. I don't know how many butterflies, PV blue butterflies. Tell us about that and how this how you'll measure the success of that a year later. Well, uh, because of the NCCP, the Natural Community Conservation Plan, that provides the protections over the land that we can reintroduce these endangered species. Uh, the Palos Verde Blue is reared in captivity in our partnership with Moore Park College. And so Moore Park College professors and students uh, met with our staff on site in an undisclosed private location, just because we don't want people to come and mm -hmm. uh, try and find them just yet. <laughs> but they've been reintroduced to the preserve in areas where they've been um, gone for, for many, many Many years so we're very excited about that reintroduction how wonderful and would you would you think you'll be reintroducing more yes we hope so the habitat is looking good we're planting more native plants um, and our biologists are out there right now surveying the land to see if we're getting a glimpse of this new generation of PV blue butterfly returning to the land right now because of the pandemic our PV our community has seen such a surge in visitors um, which we want to share this beautiful beautiful treasure um, of the nature we have here. We're so, also grateful and grateful for the work the Land Conservancy is doing um, to take care of all of our habitat. Um, it, but the impacts are there to the different communities, especially in the Del Cerro neighborhood. City Council for months has been working on solutions. I know you as, as a Land Conservancy Executive Director have participated in some of those meetings just to kind of give feedback because you guys are the experts. You're in the on the trails and see what's happening with that. One of the solutions will be a shuttle service that they're going to launch a pilot program. It'll start at City Hall um, to bring visitors that want to come hike the preserve to try to keep them away from the Del Cerro entrance at the uh, Portuguese Bend Reserve and maybe bring them down along, drop them off at the Interpretive Center here at Abalone Cove and make their way to what's Gateway Park entrance to the reserve, which happens to be in my neighborhood. Um, so I, with all that, like your thoughts on that as an entry point for, for people to hike that way, what do you think of that? <laughs> it is such a delicate balance, right, of trying to welcome visitors to the preserve while ensuring that our, our environment is not um, loved to death, right? So I appreciate the city's looking at uh, options to bring visitors to lesser visited parts. Uh, unfortunately, some of them may also be near neighborhoods, too. So I think that the city and Land Conservancy are going to be critically looking at this shuttle uh, pilot project to monitor its use and make sure that visitors aren't creating new damages in other areas mm -hmm. of the preserve. But it, it's also an exciting opportunity for visitors to park their cars at a beautiful overlook at City Hall, hop on the shuttle with their families, and get to a preserve location that may be challenging to hike to on their own. And one of those preserve locations right by City Hall, of course, is Alta Vicente, and that's such a great spot. And you've done a lot of restoration work there. Okay. Kind of want to share um, for viewers watching that have never hiked there, what's there for them? Yes, that was the Land Conservancy's first restoration project. There's 22 acres of habitat that's been restored uh, below the City Hall area. On April 14th will be the quarterly Palos Verdes um, Nature Preserve Public Forum that everyone in the community is welcome to. That's right. um, it's on, you know, virtual still. It'll be virtual. Um, share your involvement in the topics that will get discussed. For and these forums really are opportunity for anyone in the public to come and learn about what's happening in the preserve with management, uh, trail work, projects, so that there's just a great level of communication and transparency and information that the public can get about uh, what's happening in the preserve. And there's a lot happening. There is a lot. Is happening. there about six, seven, six to seven hundred 
visitors a day. That, is that the calculation? I mean, nobody knows exactly the capacity of how much, how many people have come into these trails, but I mean, do you have an idea, an estimate? Um, it certainly fluctuates too from the weekends to the weekdays right. and holidays, the summer and the seasonality of it. The city does have some trail counters up at Burma Road uh, Trailhead and at Rattlesnake Trailhead, these, these big locations to really understand how many people are coming into that area. But like you said, there's 12 re sub reserves within this larger open space. So trying to track all of those entrances is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, and stay tuned because later I'm going to ask you to tell us your favorite hike. Maybe you can share that or maybe you don't want to share that. <laughs> um, this gorgeous day, we've got lots of people out enjoying the trails and all look, taking in all of this beautiful nature as we continue to celebrate Earth Day month. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes has a lot of fun activities planned during the springtime. We are going to check in with Lisa Wellstead, um, who is with the Recreation and Parks Department, to tell you all about what's happening in the city over the next few weeks. Hi, my name is Lisa Wellstead and I'm with the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Rancho Palos Verdes, coming to you from Ryan Park under this beautiful beautiful California pepper tree that was donated to the city in 1977. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this tree later, but first I wanted to share with you the exciting virtual and safe events we have for the spring, starting with our virtual Earth Day campaign in the month of April. We are encouraging you to show us how you celebrate Mother Nature by doing an act of service and then sending a picture of that to us. You could pick up trash at the beach, you could plant a garden, start a compost, and share those photos with us at events at rpvca.gov. We're excited to see those photos come in and we will be sharing them via our city social media and showcasing a few of them at an upcoming city council meeting. During the month of May in Ryan Park, under this same tree, we will be starting a painted rock garden. We're accepting rocks no bigger than the size of your hand and we encourage you to bring them from your home. We would love to see pictures of local landmarks like the lighthouse or maybe a scene from your favorite park, but any painted rock will be a beautiful addition to our garden. We have been working hard to try to bring you events that are safe and fun and still bring the community together during this time. So much happening with the city, although virtual. And you know, we were talking that they're really encouraging our community to celebrate nature, send your photo into the city. Um, and of course the rock painting that'll come up in May, you have a two year old, so you're gonna have to get the paints out and uh, send a rock over. But um, any thoughts for people in terms of that might should be planting something at home? Yes, and now is the perfect time to plant your garden, especially for butterfly plants like milkweed. Um, and we sell native plants that we've uh, grown locally here on the peninsula, so they're perfect for peninsula gardens and well adapted. And people can it can purchase um, online. That's right, through, through the... our website, and we coordinate the pickup in a socially distanced way as well. Awesome. And also, we were talking about um, the butterfly mural right now that's over at Ryan Park. Stay tuned because we're going to show you highlights from this beautiful mural that celebrates the Palos Verdes blue butterfly um, coming up later in the show. Um, but for now, we're gonna just travel up the road. Um, about a mile from here is our wonderful Terranea Resort. You have a great partnership um, with, with Terranea. The Land Conservancy does. They've been amazing stewards of our land. Share that about your thoughts of how they've done such a great job with open space there and, and having access to beautiful trails. Yeah, Terrane has been so thoughtful with their 100 acre property and planting it all with native plants in the open space areas that have been really critical for native plants and making sure there's public trails through their property so visitors can enjoy. Yes, and of course they have lots of fun activities to celebrate Earth Day month. We're now going to check in with Gay Van Sands to find out what's happening during Earth Day at Terranea. Hello again, and here we are at Terranea in the lovely month of April, celebrating all things Earth Day, not just on Earth Day, but throughout the whole month. So please come join us for a range of activities that we have. Um, you can pick up a native planting kit at Point Discovery provided by the Land Conservancy. Um, we are offering our guests a fun little seed kit as they check in all throughout the month of April to rebuild the California forests uh, after the devastating fires that we had last year. So anybody checking in will receive that and some information. Um, on the actual day of Earth Day, we're doing our usual kayak 
cleanup tour so book that if you would like to participate and do an ocean cleanup we're also doing a fun shell frame activity at point discovery that day so bring your kids along and they can participate in that and lots and lots of other fun things we have a butterfly cookie decorating kit as a family that you can take to go which includes a blue butterfly already decorated an inspiration and then four cookies for you and your family to decorate so this blue butterfly kind of cute because although our cookies are probably what four or five inches wide the actual butterfly is only an inch so if you've seen one you're very lucky because they're very hard to spot and an interesting fact that i find amusing is that the lady butterfly isn't even blue it's the gentlemen that are blue the lady is very very sort of muted brown so you know go gentlemen and they're they're preening they are much prettier since our inception some 12 years ago now we've been committed to the preservation of the land on which we sit and we value truly uh, we're honored to have this wonderful wonderful piece of land um, at our disposal so we have had relationships since the very beginning with wonderful organizations like the Land Conservancy who help us preserve the land for future generations and find continual ways to enjoy it now. We've just launched a really fun scavenger hunt, a self-guided scavenger hunt, which you can pick up from Point Discovery, which gives you all of the plants to look for, um, identifies them along with iNaturalist, which is an app you can put on your phone and guides you around the property looking at all of the wondrous things that we have to show. So if you want to come and experience Terranea as a walker um, and experience nature, all you have to do is come and follow the trail along the cliff top. Uh, it's a really easy one to follow. You can start on the western side of the property at Pelican Parking Lot, as we call it, above Pelican Cove, or you can start by parking at the public lot here at Terranea and start at the easternmost point of the hotel. It'll take you a full 270 to 5 degrees view of the ocean and we have a two mile trail around the property circling 102 acres, so an awful lot to see. So we're standing today outside of Sea Beans, which many of you know, and Point Discovery, our activities store. Um, so if you have any questions or you want to purchase anything or participate in any of our activities, please come visit us at the store. We're open every day, 9.30 to 4.30. And you'll find us here, right next to this wall behind me, which says, very kindly, every day is Earth Day at Terranea. So activities are available to locals to you as well as our guests i know many people don't know that but if you would like to book kayaking if you'd like to book archery if you'd like to book a guided hike or a tide pool tour please come along and ask us we'd be happy to book it for you so lots going on please come see us come to point discovery and check out all the fun exciting activities that we have the weather's beautiful and terranea is open and ready to welcome you of course, Adrian, going to Terranea any day of the year, whether it's Earth Day month or not, is so wonderful to take in the beautiful coastline there, all the nature. And I finally figured out where her favorite place is to hike. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, I'm reluctant to tell you, because, <laughs> but uh, my favorite place to go is Pelican Cove, uh, which is just next to Terranea on PB Drive South. And you can hike from there down to the coast and look at the tide pools, or you can go to Terranea, and I like to stop by Sea Beans and get a coffee. Of course, that, that's that is you can't you can't go wrong there. Terranea is celebrating 12 years in our community. You're celebrating 11 years um, this this springtime now with the Land Conservancy. Um, share a little bit about where your passion for nature comes from and just how you had this vision to get into ecosystem management and do the work you do. Uh, well, I, I think my love of nature grew from my, uh, my introduction at a very young age. So since then, I've really valued that, um, that importance of connecting kids, connecting the community to our open space. There's so much nature to enjoy here on the peninsula. And so that really is what's driving my passion at the Land Conservancy is providing educational opportunities, whether it's through our uh, nature talks, our online programs that talk about nature, such as our Earth Day program, or getting people out into the preserve to help with our restoration sites and get their hands dirty. Yes, you get to do dirty work. You know that song, Silly Dan, I don't want to do your dirty work. Well, you want to do this kind of dirty work. <laughs> it can't beat the view. I mean. Yes, yes. Um, how can the community, though, get more involved with um, volunteering 
and with donating. And of course, your website is pdplc.org. But share about that. Yes, and uh, we offer a variety of ways that people can be involved. Uh, if they don't want to come out to the site to work, uh, we do the nature talk programs. Um, but we really are uh, sustained on individual contributions from the community. So we uh, welcome support in all the forms that people are willing to give. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this community is all about volunteering, and um, dozens of volunteers came together to paint the blue butterfly mural at Ryan Park. Of course, they started painting just before the pandemic, and um, but it was able to be, it's still the mural of the butterflies completed, but they're now getting signatures of all the participants on the wall. Dana Torrey, I don't know if you've met Dana, he's with our Rec and Parks Department. He's a part-time, and he's an artist. Um, he came up with this incredible project. So let's look at highlights of this project and the stories being told by Dana the artist. Welcome to the Public Art Project at Ryan Park in Rancho Palos Verdes. We hope you enjoy it. This was created with the help of over 65 volunteers. Our story begins when I started a new job working for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Working for Parks and Recreation, I was in an office with a beautiful view and a side patio overlooking the Pacific Ocean. The patio was surrounded by a low cinder block wall and an underutilized planter bed. While doing my job, I also started to conceive of ideas to improve the park with a mural on the patio cinder block wall. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes is home to one of the most endangered butterflies on Earth. Knowing this would be an excellent subject for public awareness and a public art project, I put together sample images and a budget. My budget and design was presented to the city council and approved. Working at the park, I met a lot of its patrons. One park patron was the daughter of the councilman who the park was named after. With her personal connections to the community, we put together a core group of volunteers to work on the mural. Our core group of volunteers were children 8 to 15. We also ended up with volunteers from Rolling Hills Prep School, City Hall, and my family. On our organized volunteer work days, we had anywhere from 8 to 20 people. In the first step of the project, we had children cleaning the wall and painting it white. The next volunteer day was actually after dark in the evening. Once again, this painting session was mostly children brought to the park by their parents. With the projection of an outline, the kids drew the Rancho Palos Verdes blue butterfly and the California coastline. It was a fun evening for the kids and their parents to be out in the park after dark. After that, the kids came back another day and threw paint at the wall to create a rainbow effect. By the end of that two-hour session, there was probably as much paint on the kids as on the wall. The main reason for the colored wash was to knock down the brightness of the white paint but still keep the wall vibrant. The next time the volunteers met at the park, it was to block in the shapes drawn on the wall. Blocking in this case, we used the complement to the finished colors, but maintained the same values. An example of that is the blue butterfly will first be painted orange. In the end, flecks of the blocking color will be seen throughout the finished painting. This will help the painting feel more vibrant. Blocking and the finished painting were worked on by a variety of volunteers from all ages. We had volunteers from the local community, Rolling Hills Prep School, and even City Hall. By the time COVID struck, we were well into the finished painting. At that point, the volunteers could not gather at the park and work on the painting, so I had to go it alone. Over a series of painting sessions, I added more and more brush strokes, but at the same time tried not to cover up what the volunteers had done. Every volunteer that added brush strokes to painting can come back and still see the handiwork that they helped create. Every day that I have a shift managing Ryan Park, I see people posing in front of the butterfly to make it look like they have wings. 
On a low side wall next to the mural, we placed all the names of the volunteers that helped create the painting. On one more section of wall overlooking the patio, we wrote the words, If I were a butterfly, I would, and asked kids to write in and complete the sentence. We had a variety of nice responses and added some of them to the wall with their names. In front of the volunteer wall is a planter bed where we've added the two native plants that the Rancho Palos Verdes blue butterfly lives on. My personal hope in designing this mural was to increase our awareness of the need for conservation. During the days that I'm managing Ryan Park, I often have an opportunity to talk to the park patrons about the mural, the volunteers, and the plight of the blue butterfly. The Ryan Park office overlooks the patio where I often see park patrons posing for photos in front of our mural. Whether I speak to them or not, hopefully the entertainment of the mural will spark their interest in our natural environment. And for all the volunteers, I hope they have the opportunity to come back time and time again and remember the wonderful days they had when they got to create a piece of public art. beautiful mural of the butterfly but of course seeing one live before you I know you've had the opportunity with all your work to introduce the butterfly what do you some some interesting facts about the blue butterfly you can share well it's the most endangered butterfly in North America and I think people uh, can appreciate that we have such a, a species that only relies on the peninsula's environment for its survival and what is it about the environment? What is it that they love to feed off of? They need their host plants. They need the local weed and the deer weed. And they, those only really grow here on the peninsula and those particular subspecies. Yeah. Well, we really hope that the butterfly project that you're working on is successful as you continue to reintroduce them into nature here. We're going to start to wrap up our show. Anything you want to add? Any last minute Land Conservancy announcements that are important to share with our community? Uh, well, I, I just encourage uh, residents to think about native plants when they're doing their spring gardening and providing wildflowers in their homes. Mm -hmm. um, and a special announcement is that we have uh, plans in the works for bringing goats back to the peninsula. So we love seeing them. Uh, you, know, you know, every year, uh, especially right around Whale of a Day, I know that they have the goats that were doing the fuel modification. And they're just, they do, they're adorable at the same time, do important work. So we'll look forward to... Uh, to seeing them and uh, I was going to say back to you with that announcement but we have to say so long and happy Earth Month. It was great having you here joining me Adrian um, and get out enjoy nature and happy Earth Month everyone. Thanks for watching.